Sea monkeys, x-ray glasses, mini spy cameras, these are just some of the amazing novelties that you could order from the back of a comic book. We're going to look at some of those and we're also going to talk about how some of this cool stuff from the past can inform some really cool stuff that we're working on right now. <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome mad creators to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. A lot of those things can be found in the back of comic books or within comic books or in comic book ads, which is something we're gonna talk about today. Vintage comic book ads and other vintage just advertisements in general. Uh, this stuff really inspires me and some of the work that I create. So I thought I'd share with you some of those things because even though we talk a lot about creating the artwork for comics on this channel, there's more to comics than just the art. One of those cool things that I really love about comics are those old ads that you would find in the back of comics with all these vintage novelties and things like that. So I wanna share with you some of my favorites and kind of show you how those have inspired me to create some of the things that I do. Maybe they'll inspire you too. Let's have a look. As artists, we all have things that inspire us, uh, the type of work that we create. And a big inspiration for me has always been these old vintage retro style ads, particularly from comic books, but also just in advertising in general, a lot of turn of the century type stuff, or more like in the 80s when I was growing up. Uh, I, I unboxed this particular book, Mail Order Mysteries, on, an episode, on a previous episode, but I didn't really dive into it. So I want to dive a little bit into that, plus some of the other uh, just resources that I use when coming up with ideas for designs, because a lot of what I put out there is, and some of the stuff you may not see on the channel, but if you go to my website, if you go to like my online store, you'll see a lot of the posters of things that I do. It's very, what I would call uh, retro futuristic. Um, kind of like what our vision of the future would have been if we were in the 1950s, like kind of the old Tomorrowland, if you're familiar with that look from, you know, Disney and everything, that type of thing. Uh, and, and also these, these like mail order products and things like that that they used to have in the back of comic books. Uh, I was never able to get any of these. Um, just because my parents probably just thought they were garbage and most of the stuff in here is garbage. This book actually goes through and sort of rates. They, they actually got all this stuff that they that they show in this book and they give it a rating and everything and tell if it was any good or anything. But of course the classic right here starting off, it's the, it's the x-ray specs. I mean those are probably the most famous and this kind of stuff was so intriguing to me that I actually wanted to do this myself and I don't know why, but you know, when I when I created my comic book Young and the Dead, it takes place in the 80s, and I had thought that maybe it would be cool to sort of do a, sort of a vintage look, but because I wanted to save some time and everything, or not time, but basically budgetary concerns, um, and also I'm a big fan of, and, and also in the 80s there was that black and white explosion, Ninja Turtles and all that, all that independent stuff. So I kind of, I decided to go with more of a black and white look. And I don't know if these ads look as great in black and white. They just, you didn't see those in a lot of black and white comics. So I went a different route, but if I, but it, if I would have gone that way, I would have done some mock ads and things because I think that stuff is pretty cool. And later on I did, I did do things like, I actually did this poster here. Um, these are actually products that I actually sell in my on my online store. Um, just little novelties. I, like I said, I'm a big fan of all these novelties. I've got, you know, these little brains that will grow when you add water. I've got, you know, if anyone remembers the old Nickelodeon stuff. I get a lot of like the phloem and things. I've got my own version of that. Uh, I've got, you know, of course slime. Uh, the different kinds of slime. That's uh, that's the noise making putty. And then I've got the glow in the dark glob. I've got these little sticky octopus guys. But you can tell I'm just a big fan of just these little novelties. And it's more, I mean, these are, these are just little cheap toys. But I like to, I, what, what I like to do is I like to really focus on the packaging and create an experience around that. And part of that experience was designing, like I said, this, this print. And I went back and I, you know, I wanted to match the colors, as you can tell. I mean, even look at this yellow and everything to really capture that look. But this kind of stuff is just a huge inspiration for the work that I, that I do. I'm a big fan of sci-fi stuff. 
and especially sci-fi as we would think it may turn out to be like you know the year 2000 back in the 50s the year 2000 was so far away you know that type of thing but anyway so so yeah big inspiration but i wanted to kind of go through this because it, hopefully it'll help you if you're if you're interested in di designing things like this some where i get some of my inspiration and maybe you're into a different style of of artwork and you know but it's all the same you got to kind of dig through and, and find kind of what inspires you and sort of incorporate then that, that in your work but as i said i wasn't able never able to get any of this stuff there's in addition to x-ray specs there's aqua specs or aqua specs sorry uh hypno specs and you know what ventriloquist dummies and and things that you know would either teach you how to play like guitar or fan club that's why when i created a patreon i wanted to sort of have that fan club club vibe and i like to do a little more with this i'd like to actually have these little forms or like a little you know just sort of a like a cheap like ring or decoder ring or something that stuff was always fun things that teach you how to do like karate like karate secrets the deadliest fighting skills i mean this stuff was all great or the classic charles atlas where the guy's kicking the kid kicking sand in the kid's face and then he learns how to defend himself and everything this is all just fantastic stuff or just this little it's basically just a strip of rubber that you used to stretch i mean these are the kind of things that you would get from the back of comic book pages but learn jujitsu and all, all this different stuff and this is something that i remember wanting to get and this is just a painted rock i don't know if it was painted glow in the dark or whatever but when the superman the movie came out i remember in the concept at the concession stand they were selling little pieces like these kryptonite rocks branded with superman and everything i don't know if this is exact version this is probably earlier version but I so wanted that, and of course my parents were just like, it's just a rock, you know, it's just, no, you can, we can paint a rock green and give it to you. So, so I ne never was able to get that, but I just so wanted it. And it was, it was just a rock, but the way it was packaged it, and it's kind of like, like one of the biggest success with something like this was, was the pet rock, which is a rock in a box, but you're buying the rock, which anyone could go out and find a rock. It's no different than any of that, but it's the way it's packaged and everything. And I just always admire that idea that you could just take something simple and just put a different spin on it and everything. And it becomes something new and something more desired. Um, these little toy soldiers and look how thin these guys are. It's kind of deceptive. I'm sure they never showed this version of it and they probably showed all these and you get all these toy soldiers and you get them and they're like these flat and flat figures. And I think part of that had to do with uh, plat maybe plastic being, you know, this is probably, this may have been around, you know, World War II or something. I could be wrong. No, it's probably more current than that, I think. I don't know. But anyway. And it could just also be a shipping thing. But all these little guys, I remember having these little space guys in the 80s. Um, I forgot what they were called, but there was one guy that was sort of like a turtle guy. And I actually redesigned all that um, and created my own version of it and kind of did sort of a, a, a mock reboot of it, creating designs around that. So, so this stuff is always in the back of my head inspiring. Of course, classic monsters of these big giant monsters. Look at these life-size pinups. I would have loved to have this kind of stuff. I'm a big fan of Universal Studios monsters and these little ghosts. And this is just a balloon you blow up and I guess you let it go and it flies around. <laughs> just sort of ingenious, like simple stuff that's super ingenious. The big giant monsters, moon monsters, kind of like a kaiju type thing. Dinosaurs. Look at this. Here's another example of that where it's just, it says it's just soil from Dracula's castle. So, you know, if you happen to be in Transylvania, just get a, get a big, you know, bucket full of dirt and then just package it in these little things. And it's just, it's something that doesn't cost hardly anything and you can create, a, build a story around it. These old vinyl records. I remember having the little floppy records that you used to actually get sometimes in comic books and things or in cereal boxes. That's another thing. I, I wonder if they have a book like this on cereal. I used to have this, this Vampire Blood stuff. That was great. Uh, these masks are kind of creepy. Look at that. Um, man, some of this stuff. I, I, had, I had something very similar to that. I don't think, I guess that's something you would order. Stamped pennies? I don't know what that is exactly. Money maker, I had that thing. <laughs> uh, uh, and then in, in the review, uh, yeah, they said people actually thought it was gonna make money and all it did was, it's, you know, it's a magic trick. Uh, but there were a lot of these sort of magic tricks. And the only thing that I really got that was close to this, you can kind of see some of these ads, 
I was never able to order any of this stuff from these books, but you know, I would go into like a novelty shop and I would get some cool stuff. I remember there was this little, I think it might be in this catalog, but this smoke stuff that it's like this little liquid that you rub between your fingers and it creates smoke. And it was, that stuff was really cool. Um, silent dog whistle, walk matic There's a, a little portable, like little art studio. Look at that thing. That's kind of cool. High school ring. I guess you don't have to go to high school. You just get a ring. <laughs> Look at that stiletto comb. Those are great. I never had, well, maybe I did have one of those. This is actually something I think that you would get, you know, it's supposed to be like a giant rocket ship and you actually build it. So it pretty looks pretty cool for like a cardboard box. You can see the kid in here. What are these bike decals? Huh, or little tattoos and things like that. Hovercraft, that's pretty cool. What is this? I don't know, triple flips. I'm not sure what that is. That's sort of a, like a, what do you call it? I forget the, um, exquisite corpse where you kind of have the different head bodies and, and legs and kind of mix them up. Watches, little mini spy camera. I'd love to get, do like a, a sort of a spy camera thing. That'd be cool. And then here's, oh, see, that's what I had. This, this right here, the magic smoke. You can kind of see how it's coming out through here. But yeah, I had that, but I didn't get it from a comic book. I got it from, uh, from just a, a, like a novelty, like a magic shop, like. And then all these gags. I had a lot of these. I, I did a video, I mean, or I, I, basically a children's show. And there was this one song we did where the main character had disguised as a traveling salesman and he was selling all this kind of stuff. So he opened up a, a box and uh, he just kept pulling all this stuff out. So I've got, I still got some of that stuff from when I did that video. These little decals that look like broken windows. And I, I don't know if these are like fake cigarettes, I guess. I remember they used to have like the candy cigarettes. I don't know if you can get away with that anymore. Oddity. Sea monkeys. That's another classic. I would love to come up because, like I said, with all this stuff that I've got, I'd love to come up with something sort of in line of sea monkeys, but just kind of call it something different. And I don't know if that's something that I could, you could buy. Like um, sometimes they call it white label, where you could just buy things and put your own branding on it. But that's something that I would like to do because I'd love to come up with my own version of sort of sea monkeys, even if it was the exact same thing but just branded differently. <laughs> Some of the stuff you just you wonder. And then what is this? A Hulk record? That's cool. But bag of laughs. I think I had something similar to that. And then look at that. Just a whole big box of magic tricks. That's pretty cool. But yeah, this is just a fantastic book. And here, here you can kind of see what some of these ads would look like in the back of comics. So that's, you know that's what you were advertised and then some of this other stuff is what you actually got so man I love this book but there's some other stuff too I showed some of these uh, this is the superhero catalogs and I showed some of these on uh, my patreon channel I may have shown one of these on on uh, on the channel here too as well but this is another inspiration you could probably track these down so these are all ads that most of them were created by uh, artists uh, in the uh, Kubert school and they would just design all these ads, but they're all illustrative. So even if it's just products like the Star Wars, you know, action figures and posters and no photographs, it was just all drawn and, you know, Micronauts. I mean, this is, this is more in the eighties. This is when I was growing up. So, I mean, or, you know, late seventies, but look at all these, these are, you know, action dolls, the kiss figures. I used to love those. These are, these are my favorite, you know, um, I probably had maybe about, I would like, to, I, I want to say I've had about half of these guys, but probably not that many, but I had a few of them. I had Batman and, um, I had, uh, Shazam, Captain Marvel, uh, Robin, Batgirl, but there were a lot of them I, I wish I had that I never, never got, but man, but this is, but this is such great inspiration. And there's some other stuff like this online that you can find. Um, there is a comic, there's a website called Comic Book Plus that just has archives and archives of old public domain comics. And if you look through any of those old comics, you can see some of the, some of the ads in there. Cause this, these were all ads done by one particular company, you know, that produced these, the, like I said, the Kubert school created all of these. Um, but 
And there's, here's more of these. And I love this, I pointed out this before, but this has gotta be the craziest superhero costume I have ever seen. Look at this belt. And it almost looks like he's got a, like, doesn't even look like a real cape. It looks like he's just put, you know, that it's like a sheet or something. And just, man, that is like the craziest thing. And actually, when we talk about Migos, I thought, I saw somebody do online, on a YouTube video, somebody had done a custom Migo of this guy, and it was the funniest thing. But yeah, there's more of these. You can probably search these out um, just online. I had to kind of track these down. You may find them in dollar bins or whatever. I can't imagine that they go for a ton. But it's just, for me, it's just great to, just to kind of see some of the stuff that was out there. And then, you know, in a, you know, you can sort of see even with the, the fonts and stuff that I use on this poster I designed. Just really trying to, trying to capture that, the look of these, these old comics. But these are great. What else we got in here? You know, stickers and, you know, Viewmasters. Those were so big. I've done, I actually have a Viewmaster print where I took, I've got this series of prints where I took two different inventions and kind of combined them together. So I took a Viewmaster and a Polaroid camera and sort of made it, it sort of a vintage ad off of that. Um, but man, this, this is just great stuff. I just love looking through all these ads. So that's another inspiration, the superhero, it's just superhero book or superhero, it's kind of changed the, the name throughout, but it's superhero catalog. But if you look up those, you can find those. And all it is is just old vintage ads. Um, but it's not just comic books. I'm also a big fan of mascots, like old advertising mascots. This is another great book, it's called Ad Boy. And it, it's just got all these great vintage ads from like turn of the century type stuff. Um, stuff that before I was born, but it's still, I mean, I still love it. Cause some of this stuff would, would carry on. I know in the eighties there was a big resurgence of like 50 stuff. So some of the stuff kind of was, you know, you would see some of this. I remember this frosty character from the, the, you know, the ice cream, that stuff was still around. I would go into like, I don't know if this is the exact same guy, but there used to be this place called Thrifties. It was a department store and they still sell the ice cream. They still manufacture the ice cream, but you would go in and you get these ice cream scoops. And it, the scoops, I remember they were being, they were like cylindrical. They had this gun that they would take and like take the scoop out and they were, they were, cylindrical so they would just stack on top of each other and it, it's just so they wouldn't fall over as much I guess for you know but you can get like a triple scoop and I always wanted that triple scoop sometimes I was lucky and I was able to get a double scoop but never the triple scoop um, but yeah but you can still I think some of the around here anywhere there's like the ice and water stores a lot of those still places still do carry the um, thrifty ice cream and I don't know if they still have those cylindrical ice cream scoopers but man it was just great um, but I remember these little puppets. They were just basically plastic little puppets and like Burger King would have them and things like that. But before I sort of got into doing all the mad scientist stuff and everything, what I what I used to do was I was a, I did character design. That was before, I mean, everyone nowadays is sort of a character designer, that's sort of the thing. But when I was doing it, there weren't a whole lot of people that specifically focused on character design. So I would design a character for a company and then you know, we'd build websites and advertising all based on that and, and the logos and all that stuff that went with it. But here, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but you can kind of see this sort of offset printing that's just, it's not perfect. Just a couple different colors. This is all just two colors and then half tones and things like that, but I just love that stuff. You know, a lot of these these products aren't still around. I mean, C&H, Pure cane sugar, that's that's still around, but some of these some of these things have gone, you know, they're just no longer around. I mean, just interesting. Some of these industries and aren't even around, but oh, cereal boxes, that's another classic. I, I should do some cereal box prints, but in some way that's been overdone. But if I can find out some some good ideas from that. But another place you can get a lot of inspiration for this, there's a website called CSA Images. Uh, go, and I'll try to remember to put links to all these different things, to the Comic Book Plus and CSA images, but they've just got tons and tons of, I think it's all stock that you can use. You, I think you might have to purchase it. I, I think some of it is original stock and some of it has been redesigned by the designer. Um, but it's just, I mean, you could just flip through that thing over and over and just find all this great inspiration for all this, uh, you know, vintage stuff. I mean, look at that's with the old good and plenties. I mean, those are still around. Same with hot tamales. Um, 
It's funny, I used to, actually a long time ago, back when, uh, what was it, was it Tumblr? Or no, it was, I think it was, I forgot the name of the, oh, I can't remember it, but it was it was some blog site, blogger, I think, dot com. It must have been blogger dot com or something like that. I did uh, I did this thing. If I can remember, maybe I'll put. If it's still up, I'll have to search for it. Maybe I'll find a link to it. But I did basically. I started doing this blog, and it was all articles based on. It was called Cartoon Confidential, and it was all like kind of salacious reports and things, almost like a, a National Enquirer, but it was all based in the world of these advertising mascots. So it would be like the old Mountain Dew mascot or like Tony the Tiger, and it would be like the, or Kool-Aid Man. It would just be these these stories about them and their personal life. And it was, it was kind of silly, but it was I just did that to sort of advertise my business. But it was fun while it lasted, and some of those were kind of funny, um, just funny stories that I wrote. So I'll have to see if those are still out there, but. Yeah, I mean, I love all this. The, just these old, you know, just classic mascots. So much inspiration here. This, that's the guy. That's the. I think that's the thrift. Oh, maybe that's not the thrifty, but the the cones. I think this is the cones they use. So I remember seeing this exact mascot. Um, and it's all broken up into different categories. This one is, looks like alcohol or soft drinks. Then we're getting into soft. Oh, well, that's weird because it's <laughs> here's a, a bottle of squirt next to some cool cigarettes. So obviously you don't see cigarette ads anymore. I mean that's just not a thing. Um, so it's kind of cool to look back through some of this stuff. And actually, that's no longer. They removed the uh, the Native American girl from the Land of Lakes thing. So some of these mascots are just you know just moving with the times I mean they're just not things you'll see anymore it's just like of its time obviously like this Pontiac thing I mean you're not probably gonna see anything like that for better or for worse I mean that's um, but there's just a lot of I love this guy I mean that, that is kind of a crazy character design I don't know how well it works but but it's interesting it's interesting to see how different people you know attach these and I didn't realize that Weight Watchers has been around that long but that's crazy Captain Raid Bright orange flavor. I love this font. That's pretty cool. Orange drink. I remember, I don't know if they still have it because I haven't been to McDonald's in like years. But when I was growing up, McDonald's had these orange drinks. And then they all also like, people would buy like big jugs of the orange drink and bring it to like your your uh, sports things and everything. And it was crazy. I don't think that's the thing you probably should be drinking after you played sports. Probably more like a Gatorade or something. But yeah, that was the thing. Potatoes. Oh, this is the classic. Look at this. It's uh, it's the, oh no, it's not just, I thought it was just the monster cereals, but it's all the cereals plus McGruff, the crime dog. That was a great one. Great, um, you know, sort of cartoon property. Peter Pan, what? Is this peanut butter or something else? Oh, it must have been a restaurant called Peter Pan. Yeah, so there was a lot of products called Peter Pan. Here, here you can kind of see what I was talking about. So there's Carl's Jr. Arby's. Uh, Queenie or Burger Queen. I didn't know there was a Burger Queen. Um, I remember Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken before they kind of went with the KFC. Um, but yeah, all these, the, then these were just real, just, I mean, they're kind of ridiculous. They didn't really do much, but they were supposedly hand puppets. Like with these ones, I guess you can make the hands move and, and you can bend the head down. <laughs> Some of this stuff. Look at that old distinctive Mexican food for Taco Bell. I don't know if you could call <laughs> Taco Bell distinctive Mexican food, but uh, magic cards and tricks. I just, hopefully you guys are getting a kick out of this because this is just great stuff. Um, Mr. Peanut, he's been around for a while. I think, re I thought they got rid of him, but I think it was just a publicity stunt. I'm sure he'll be back. And here we go, Adventure free adventure comics from Rayovac Batteries. And man, I love this, all of the space stuff. Uh, this Elsa the cow that was one of the art I did write an article about her and the it was Elsa the cow and I think the Borden cow from the glue or was it not Borden no that would be Borden I think but the Elmer's glue and I had this thing that they were married and that their relationship ended in shambles and just stupid stuff like that but I'll have to see if I can find those those old blog posts that I did silly putty look at that more of these uh, more of these little hand puppets 
I wonder if I wonder how if I can manufacture those. It might be fun to try to bring some of that back. These little, they you know, they always had like, you know, Boggs Big Boy, like he was running for president, or the Tricks Rabbit, yes or no, should he get tricks? And these little just badges, like political, like um, campaign badges that they would have. Vote for the Jolly Green Giant. Um, so yeah, that's Ad Boy. And like I said, these are just great sources of inspiration. Mail-in mysteries, Ad Boy. Check out CSA Images online. Check out comicbookplus.com. Check out the superhero catalog. And if I can remember, like I said, I will leave links to some of these. But I, I mean, and I want to know from you guys what you know. What inspires you to create? What What are some of the things that that you know, you try to incorporate into the work that you do. Um, but the more I look at this, the more just inspired I get. I always, the biggest, one of the biggest comments I get is just, I don't know what to draw, but there's so much stuff out there that you can, that you can draw from and put it into your artwork and just to inspire me. I just don't see how anyone could ever be at a point where they're like, I don't know what I want to create because there's just so much out there, so much great inspiration, uh, things to inspire us to create, to put work out there. And this is one of my biggest inspirations. So thanks for letting me share this with you guys. I ha hope you got something out of it. Hope you're somewhat entertained and yeah, I mean, just great stuff. All right, there you go. So if you couldn't tell by now, I am a huge fan of vintage retro style advertisement novelties that you find in the back of comics, character designs from turn of the century, all of that kind of stuff. But that's me. But I want to know, what are the things that inspired you? There's so many different styles of artwork, and most of the artwork that we see is actually based on or informed by something else that has been done before in the past. You can see a lot of the work that I do is clearly inspired by this, but what about you guys? What kind of style of artwork do you work on? What inspires you to create the things you create? Let me know in the comments section and I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker starter kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.